my to-do list is looking like. It does not look like a whole lot, but seeing as it's already 4 o'clock in the afternoon, <laughs> I'm being very optimistic, which I'm an optimistic person by nature, but guys, this is really optimistic. <laughs> so what we're wanting to do today is we're wanting to get a quick declutter in the kids' closets. I want to just quickly go through their clothes because I noticed a couple of their shirts are getting short on them already after that big initial declutter we did a couple months ago. I've noticed that we're we're wading in water too. Our britches, our, our, our pants are turning into capris. <laughs> so I need to do a quick declutter in their closets. Well, the girls' closet and the boys' uh, chest of drawers thing. I want to do a mama tidy up of the kids' rooms. My kids have been keeping their room pretty much clean for the most part. I just really want to probably get their bedding in the wash possibly but if not i just really want to get it vacuumed really good no matter how clean their room is the floor always has some sort of crumb little bitty paper pieces of paper all that stuff on there so i, I need to get around the perimeters with a vacuum for sure if i don't do anything else in their rooms i definitely need to do that I need to clear off the porch because listen <laughs> So, uh, last year, I found those really, really cool pieces of furniture from the Ross. It's like faux wicker, right? And so, it, you know, I, I'm always one to sit really slow in a chair no matter where I'm at. That's why I don't go to Olive Garden because I'm just terrified of breaking their chair. And it's not even the fact that I get embarrassed because I couldn't embarrass myself if I tried. But I'm afraid they're going to put, like, the chair on the bill. And I don't want to go pay for an Olive Garden chair. Nobody wants to pay for an Olive Garden chair. So, I, I always sit in my porch furniture really easy well whoever's porch furniture i sit in i always ask for permission first i'm like hey y'all do you think i'm gonna break this and if they say no go ahead then i just sit really really slowly on it so i know for sure i don't break it so i've been sitting slowly on my porch furniture lo and behold if it didn't come a big old storm and it blew my porch one of my porch chairs all the way over to like the other road in the trailer park and then my neighbor brought it back and I sat on it and it just never sat right after that and I kind of collapsed it. <laughs> so we can blame it on the weight. We can blame it on the storm. It's probably due to both. So I need to clear off the furniture that is broken and collapsed and just keep what I can on there, I guess, until we figure out what we're doing. Probably gonna get rid of that rug because it's had it, but I don't know what the state of the porch is gonna look like under the rug because I might have put the rug on wet paint. I can't remember. And if I, if I know me i probably did put the rug on wet paint so it's probably gonna look pitiful whenever i pull it up but i got another rug outdoor rug to put in its place i got it at ross a while back and i just haven't put it on there yet i need to get a quick dinner we did have a fairly large lunch so i'm just thinking something like grilled cheeses something really simple something really fast i need to tidy up the living room just give it a good maybe mop and vacuum make sure the couch is cleared off the ottomans cleared off things like that you know a wax warmer and the wax a wax in the wax warmer kind of thing not a big clean just to tidy up and then i would like to do my nails with these nail stickers i got usually the nail stickers give me sense issues but my nails permanently look dirty and like this this is after shower I don't know if I've just if they've been dirty for so long that they they just look that way now or what but they always look dirty no matter if I could like stick my hand in Clorox and it still look like I had dookie under my nails I don't get it if I have stickers on there it hides it so that's what we're going for fake it till we make it I like to do that but they also give me itchies like I don't know like I get it makes me want to like claw on gravy i don't know what that means but it may get <laughs> messes with my sensories but i want to do it because i have so much to do this week this is really the only afternoon i have to do any of this stuff so i gotta get most of it done today and i really like to do that because i don't want to walk around with dookie looking nails then I want to go through and prepare the school stuff for next week. We took a week off from school, then went back a week, and then took another week off. We can do that because we homeschool year-round. I make our schedule, and as long as we get in the required days in the state of Tennessee, then, like, that's fine. I just have to make sure I put it on our attendance record and in our official record. So, usually we take two weeks off in a row various times of the year. And a lot of times we do that not in the summer because things like the beach and stuff are more crowded in the summer. If we go in the early, early fall, late summer or like the late, late, late spring or early summer, then it's not as crowded and there's not like a bunch of like travelers. I'm trying, <laughs> I'm trying to think what's the word uh, whenever you travel somewhere. I can't remember. We're just going to say travelers. There's not a bunch of travelers there. So we like to we like to play around with our schedule and we kind of just move it around so this year we did a week off then we came back a week and then we are on the other week off we'll go back the friday following the fourth of july and that friday will be just like a quick review thing because we do school year round i don't have to have a bunch of review time which is why we do school year round 
so then Monday we'll be able to start fresh and then hit the ground running I mean that, that's what I love about doing school year round I know it sounds daunting to a lot of people who don't do that but my kids love it because there's like zero to none of review work which is awesome because they're not having to sit there and relearn things that they already learned but didn't retain over a big long summer break so that's what our friday is going to be we can get away with just a one quick review day and then start off on that monday hitting the ground running so this doesn't need to be done today but i would like to get it done today this is the day that i need to do it though because it's a guaranteed get it done today versus any other day of the week it's always just uh you know it's always chaos it's always chaos and then the last thing i want to do or want to try to get done is clean the cleaning machinery i didn't know what it was called i was trying to think of a uh, utensils clean the cleaning utensils is that what a vacuum and a carpet cleaner is i don't know my carpet cleaner is looking a little swampy and my vacuum cleaner has seen better days my dogs are in heavy shedding mode right now so half of my vacuum is filled with dog hair dust um all sorts of things and it's not looking good and the last time i did a really really big cleaning spree on my <laughs> cleaning machinery was probably eight ten months ago so i definitely need to get on that and that's just a that's just an estimate because i don't know i'm bad with time y'all i could say it was a year ago and it would be like two months ago or i could say it was two months ago and it'd be like two years ago i'm very bad with time so it's it's been a hot minute though so they need to get done and I might not do it to the extent I did it last time which was take it apart piece by piece and wash it down in the bathtub. Do you guys remember that video? <laughs> I went hard on that video. <laughs> might not do it like that but I do want to get it clean, get my hose clean out and stuff. That way it's just running to the best of its ability and I'm not overworking it because I love my vacuum and my carpet cleaner. They work awesome. So this is what it's looking like. Let's just start somewhere and as we go along we will mark it off. Let's just get the down bang done son. What are you wearing? A bandana, whatever you call it. Do you know where bandanas go normally? <laughs> On your head. Yeah. Jolie, I'm afraid it's going to cut off your circulation. Oh, no. No. Yeah. If it show my butt, I... What? So if it show my butt, I'm sorry. Everyone needs to see a little butt. No, everybody's not needing to see a little butt. Right? <laughs> okay, put your bit on, Rainbow. There you go. Oh, okay. Yeah, buddy. Okay. Man, you look so cool. All right, let we me see what you're doing. Sorry about this. Uh huh. We welcome you to the room. Oh, okay. You got your little Christmas decor there. This is our babies. Oh, are they asleep? Shh. Oh, sorry. Shh. Okay. Um. Okay, but the babies are gonna get vacuumed around. I'm about to turn the vacuum on, and so they're. So I'm probably the gonna wake them up. Might as well just put them to bed on your bed. Is your bed sheets clean, by the way? Do they smell funky or anything? No. Okay, so do I need to wash them, yes or no? Maybe so? No. Maybe so. No. Wait, I'm getting two different answers here. Two no. conflicting no. answers. No. no. Y'all are just afraid that they're not going to be dried. But <laughs> no. <laughs> but okay, so I, you don't want me to wash them? No. Look, by the way, our friend who sent you these hasn't got to see it on your bed yet. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I just, uh, I'm, mm -hmm. I put, this is my sheet, so I put this. You use the blanket as your sheet? Yeah. Okay. And I, use I, I doubled my bed up. One of our friends actually made these for the girls. Like, hand made these. And they are absolutely gorgeous. The girls love them. So, they don't want me to wash their bedding, which helps me out a whole lot. But one thing we do need to do, girls, is... <laughs> don't go in there. Oh, why? Oh. Why? All right, we need to definitely get the clothes out of the floor because we've got to we go through the floors. Or we we got to go through the clothes to make sure they still fit because I've been noticed some of y'all's t-shirts have been turned into crop tops on accident. Yeah. <laughs> so we need to go through this and see. I know we just went through it, but we need to go through and see what we can get rid of because we don't want to keep anything that we can't use, right? Yeah. All right. Whatever's too small, then we're going to toss and give away, okay? I love that shirt. It's payday. Oh, By sorry, the way, no. this is a shirt I got from Torrid no. and that Torrid haul I told you guys because my my shirts were getting crop topped too <laughs> and it showed them off my front butt. Y'all ain't got a front butt. That, if you're wearing that, you have to sing it. What? I can't remember the words. The first, the first and that's it. the gospel truth. And that's the gospel truth. Oh, okay. Oh, oh you think you got it? She's something. And I don't know. Oh, that's a mad game. <laughs> Get me my part to my camera so I can put it on the tripod. Oh, Ooh, God. you think you wait, got it? Wait, wait can I show them a dance? Na, 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 na. I need to repaint that door because the paint we use on that sucks. 
Hey. It, it was the old paint, wasn't it? Was that the hey. old paint? Uh, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because it did not do good. Yeah, the paint that we used was watery, and it didn't cover hardly nothing. Why y'all got the party lights on in here? <laughs> they're, they're flashing Daddy, different they colors. Elevator, Hey, you. Hey. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Jolie, you're going to be the main culprit because you're the smallest, so I know if it's a crop top on you, it's going to be a crop top on JJ. Try this on. Dude. <laughs> that smells like kabuki. You're gonna have to wash your tail, girl. <laughs> it's so funny. Get me one. Look at me. me. I need to try this. this that is fits so you. Cute. Okay, yeah, that fits you. So keep it. Put that on the hanger, Jay. The right way, not inside out either. I used to put my clothes on with. I start with my legs. I put the. I put my shirts. Under my legs and then. <gasps> we can, really? Mama, yeah. we can wear this I used to do that. Did that work out for you? Can I show you a trick? Have y'all even ever wore this? I yeah. wore it. Keep. I, I know this fits you, so keep. Y'all hear Cinderella? <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I don't know. Alright. Jolly, put, that, put that in the keep. Yeah, Gatlinburg. We put that in the keep. Things what it seems, but I feel gravity is holding me down. It's there for all to see through dirt and through debris. Everyone is leaving this forsaken town. So we got rid of one, two, two three, <laughs> four, five. Three, four, five. Five pieces of clothing. <laughs> and that's all we kept. <laughs> Y'all, my kids are so cute. So they were talking and they're like, we got to show them what our friends sent us in the mail. And I was like, your friends? And JC said, and JJ was like, we can't see them, but they're still with us. Forever. <laughs> so now we're going to tackle this. <laughs> All these squishmallows. Now, I had them hidden back here behind their bed. But we didn't want to do that. We didn't <laughs> do that right here. So apparently they brought them back out here. But one of you guys had a genius idea. And you sent this bing bag case Proper. thing. Bing bag cover to put all the squish smells in to make like a bean bag and the girls flipped out when they saw that I, I wish that we did p.o box openings but it's just there's a lot of you know it's 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 shaky ground in that territory the, their faces whenever they saw it they flipped out so we're gonna get this right here this area right now. <laughs> Okay. We're gonna get this area right here that is overran by all of their Squishmallows collectibles and we're gonna get them in that bean bag so they'll also have something to like lounge on. That's a genius idea. Yeah. So it's, let me show you guys. It is this like unicorn bean bag cover 
And it is so soft. It feels like so yep. felty. We're going to fill this thing up with squishmallows. Okay, I'm excited. I'm excited for this. All right. They're Easter collectibles going in. Mushroom. It's like your Santa Claus pudding. Going in. <laughs> your Santa Claus putting some toys in Oh my bag. gosh. Okay. Another Easter. Yeah, your macaroon. Ramen is going in. That's not pancakes. Okay, pancakes are going in. Popcorn oh, going that's in. Big. Popcorn. Other mushrooms going in. Good Stitch boy. is going in. This little fella is going in. It's an axolot. Are you right. putting this one in there too? I thought y'all were leaving these out. Mm. Wait, actually, no, no I'm leaving, leaving my out. baby. I'm, that's where I squished them. You're leaving out. This is sure. You got this one. We went to go see Stephanie. <laughs> it's humongous. Coming out. The pumpkin. There's more carrots. Oh. Oh gosh, I'm obsessed. Pumpkin. Look how smart. Oh, I love oh. it. <gasps> okay, that is so cool. So cool, man. <laughs> All right, are y'all gonna put it? Are y'all? Yeah, we need to get you one for yours. We'll definitely find you one. This is going to go over here, right? It's a bing bag. That's genius. It's a yeah, it's really genius. It's Whoever made that bag. up. Who, who got it? One Friends. of our friends. Hey, what friend. friend. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't collapse because those squishmallows, the way they're made, like it just, you, it sit, you can sit in it. Potato bag. It's a big old potato bag. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Cammy's bedroom it looks like it's pretty much clean clean for the most part um, except for vacuumed but they keep their room pretty clean I mean pretty pretty clean I'm gonna vacuum it up go through their clothes really quickly then vacuum it up and then that's all I'll pretty much have to do in here So we have done the quick declutter in the kids' closets and drawers. 
And then I've done the mama tidy in their bedrooms, which just required me to really vacuum in there and just clear off some things. I'm going to clear off the porch real quick before I start on dinner. I may clear off the porch and tidy up the living room before I start on dinner. And then I'll start on dinner. And then this can be my afternoon stuff. I may not get to clean in my <laughs> cleaning machinery. But if I don't, I do want to empty it. Because they're full right now of dirty water, clean water, and my vacuum thing is full too so if i don't get to like cleaning cleaning it then i'm definitely going to empty them out and make sure that they're good to use for the next time we use them but this stuff right here is definitely a priority i have to get all this done i don't have to get my nails done but i want to so i'm going to clear out the porch tidy the living room and then tackle some easy peasy dinner look at my little wiener dog down here though he's so cute all right here's the state of my porch um i got a broom out here i don't even know why it's pitiful so this is what happened this was not due to my weight let me just clarify that again <laughs> um it might have had something to do with it but in my defense it was aluminum in the bottom of it so safe to say when i get new porch furniture it will not be from the ross and it will not be faux wicker with aluminum i mean it's basically aluminum full metal pieces in the bottom of it so it'll be a little bit sturdier heavy dutier this rug it probably looks like this under the rug this porch needs to be repainted desperately but i'm going to keep my tabletop fire pit and stuff i just need to get more lava rock for it going to keep my little piece of furniture over here just need to get that wood off of there probably keep this chair just for now until we can get something else because i like to come out here and watch the kids play a lot so i need somewhere to sit i can sit on the stairs if i want to but I just like having that there. So, I don't know. Now that I said that, we might want to get rid of it. I don't know. What is this? I have no idea. I don't know. We'll see what we're feeling. But we definitely got to clear it off nonetheless. What my tater doing? What my tater? Look at that nub. What my tater doing? got the porch completely cleared off it looks so much bigger without all that stuff on it but it does need painted desperately bad so but it looks good it's clear because that's not my to-do list for months this is the declutter pile and then we got odds and ends over here i have no idea what this is is that panties no okay i was like <laughs> i thought that was my panties got just random stuff there's not random no there's not random we got me there which look y'all i actually look like i lost a little bit of weight finally usually y'all are always telling me that you see the weight loss in me and i'm always like y'all are just saying that because you love me but i actually see it in myself now like look at my face look look i can see it now so i'm excited about it i love y'all's love for me don't get me wrong but when i can actually see it myself and i don't have like that body dysmorphia thing or like puffy or anything like that then it makes me feel good and it's like yes we're getting somewhere baby we just got like you know just odds and ends things random sock but odds and ends things um this is new school books that i have to put in the school thing not bad i just really need to tidy it up in here pick up some random stuff and then a vacuum and put a wax warmer in a wax melt put a wax melt in the wax warmer and then we're good to go i started all of this at four o'clock and it is now seven o'clock so we've been going at it for three hours straight the girls room i got the biggest whiff of turd i'm standing over vent is it me no, it ain't me. It smells like 
dog dookie, but Tater's right here and Banks is in there with kids. I've been going at it for three hours straight and the girls' room is really what took the longest because we took all of their clothes out of there. The boys' room I didn't have to do so much because I kind of knew that there wouldn't be a lot that we had to get rid of in there, so. The porch took little or no time at all. So, once I get this done, it's 7 o'clock. I'm hoping I can get done with this uh, by 7.30, which should be more than enough time. Get dinner done so we can eat by 7.45 because grilled cheeses aren't going to take that long. I don't like to eat that late, but I really want to get this done before I move on. Or I fear, I fear that this will not get done today. So as long as we eat by 7.45, 7.30, 45 we'll be good. Now that this is done and looks so much cleaner, how precious. <laughs> now that this done looks so much cleaner and just tidy and everything. I just mopped the other day, so that's good for me. I don't think that I need to mop. I'll probably get down on my hands and knees again and scrub the floors. I've been trying to do that every now and then just to make sure it stays clean. I got a little bit of time left over because that only took me like seven minutes at the most. So I'm going to real quick go through and add in our new books into our school thing. Get rid of anything we're not going to need in this next semester and just kind of organize everything it's not well <laughs> I almost said it's not a mess it's not a mess it's just very disorganized so we're gonna go and just get rid of anything in here that doesn't need to be in here and organize it make it look real nice all right let me show you what's in here so we have our aces these are all of my kids ace paces and they are in numerical order and organized by subject so whenever they get done with the paste, they know they can just come in here and they can just pull the next one. I separate the test from the books for that reason. Um, that I like to know when they get the test. So when they get done with the book, they show me the book. I do a parent recap over it because ACE teaches your kids how to grade their own work from a very, very young age. Like kindergarten, first grade, they're teaching your kids how to score and grade and check and fix all of their work. But as the parent, you go back in and you have the parent key, which is the parent slash teacher key, and then you go through and you do a mama sweep of it, basically, like I just did with their rooms. And then once they get done with their test, you grade their test. They don't grade their own test. So I've got all those in numerical order and organized by subject so that they can pull the pace, but they can't just walk up and pull the test. They have to let me know first. I get all their ace paces from christianbooks.com. That's where I get all of them. That's where I find them to be the cheapest and it's easier for me because I've ordered them there for like years and years and years. And Christian Book is where I've got all of our curriculum since Colton was in preschool because I started uh, homeschooling when Colton was four and I we did K-4 curriculum which is basically preschool. They have been good throughout my entire homeschooling process which is almost eight years so that's what's down here as well as like the markers the extra pencils extra pens dry erase markers glue sticks paper clips hole punchers rulers everything that they need for whatever they can come over here and just grab one and then put it back where they get it up here i've got our record keeping packs and this is where i just keep the most recent records 
I have an area in my home where I keep all of the records going all the way back to Colton's K4. Whenever you homeschool, even if you go independent, whether you go independent, go by your county or whatever, you always want to make sure you're record, record keeping and keeping every single thing you possibly can. You don't have to keep every page of work or anything, but you need to have a nice portfolio of what your kid is learning and where they're at academically. Basically a paper trail for what they've been doing. It's always good to have that. So this is just our recent records and you can get these record uh, packs. If you do a spaces, you can get these record packs off of Christian Book whenever you order your paces and your teacher keys, then you can order these two. And it basically, let me show you what they come. I have a, actually I have a clear one, hold on. In the record packs, you have your master record sheet. That's your master record sheet. And it comes with one of the pink and yellow slips so that whenever you write on this, you also have copies which I make copies of everything whenever I do my records. You can do the school year, the grade, the beginning date, ending date, account number, account name. If you go through the county, you don't necessarily have a, an account number or an account name. Um, but if you go through independent, then I believe you have like an account thing with your umbrella school and stuff like that. But this is just test scores. So with our A spaces, when they take the test, like I was telling you guys, I'm there for the test. I'm right there while they're taking the test so that I can observe them. And this is where we put all of the test scores. I fill this out. The kids never touch their record sets at all. And then right here below the test scores, we have the attendance records. And I keep an attendance record online as well as right here on paper. That way I have two sources of paper trails. And that way if one gets destroyed, God forbid, I have the other one as backup. And I would suggest everybody who does homeschooling does that. Whatever you have, and physical copy make an electronic document as well that is that way you just have both just in case and then down here at the bottom is like the parent signature and stuff like that so I like these because it copies onto those bottom two pages so you have three copies of your test scores and your attendance and your test scores is how you're going to round up your grade for that semester in that subject so it's easy too because so you have your six paces right here and you can go off of number, pace number, and then a percentage of what they got on it. And then you can do your first term average and then you do your second term average and then you combine those for the final term average. It sounds complicated, but I promise if I can do it, anybody can. The main thing you wanna do is just make sure you have a paper trail of everything and make sure that your kids are progressing academically. If not, then homeschool might not be for you and it might be a private school. Or maybe they do need to be in a public school setting to learn. I won't be the homeschooler that tells you homeschooling is for everybody because I know everybody's life is different their personal lives are different and their relationship with their children are different. But I can tell you not to base your decision to homeschool off of one year homeschooling. If I had done that the first year was absolute chaos. I knew nothing, I, I didn't know what I was doing at all. Like I cried so much. Second year got easier, third year got easier. And then I have all my kids in homeschooling and we're just bam, 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 bam. And you know what to do. You know where to send your documents. You know how to keep your records. It's, a, it's literally a process and you have to learn that kind of thing through experience. Nobody can teach you that. You can't learn it off a screen. This is something you gotta learn by experience. This is to help demonstrate responsibility. They check it off for responsibility. And they mark off their pages as they complete them. It says, as you complete each subject, set new goals for the next day. So right here's where you would write your total pages. And then um, whether you have a book report and whether you give it as oral or written. We do a lot of oral reports, but we do a lot of written as well. Um, your Bible memory verse. I don't make my kids memorize the Bible memory verse from the Ace Paces. But mine had the choice to either choose the Bible verse that the Ace Pace gives them or to choose a Bible verse that they are more interested in at that time. Because the more interested you are in something, the more it's likely you'll remember that verse. So like if I'm afraid and something really hits me in the Bible, then I'm going to remember for God hasn't given you the spirit of fear, but power of love and a sound mind. You can hit me with something from Proverbs all day long, but it's not going to click like that scripture I need at that time will. So I let them pick what Bible verse they want to memorize. So for Monday, they set their goal and they set their total page number that they want to complete and then they check it off. And you have several of these and they are front and back. They last a long time. You have a bunch of different color stickers for incentives and these are just for their progress chart. Every records pack comes with a student progress report. It's basically a report card that you do out for your student just so that they can have and you can have as well as a parent or a pterodactyl. 
Um, you start with student, your school year, and your supervisor, which would be me. And then you open it up here and you have your first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter. You have your semester total for first semester, semester total for second semester, and then year total, which is the same thing. You get your average grade like you do on your official report sheet that you get the copies from. You have your computer progress and you write down the program that you're using for their computer skills class if they take one. I have mine take one because electronics is the future and Ace Paces is a really dated curriculum as it is. You don't want your kid to be, you don't want your kid to learn a dated curriculum and not progress in anything electronic because we're in an electronic world at this point. Back when Ace Paces started, it was like a very paper and pencil kind of thing. You didn't have a lot of electronic options when it comes to learning and stuff like that, but now we do. So if you do something dated like Ace Paces are really dated. Rod and Staff is a, I think it's a Mennonite curriculum. It's very dated. It's also like a pen and paper kind of curriculum. If you do one of those, I would suggest at least somewhere in your curriculum, your schedule, your routine, adding in computer skills, a computer skills program, a typing class, um, all, all sorts of things like that. That way that they're familiar with things that are electronic as well as the pen and paper kind of thing because in the future, more than likely in whatever career they decide to pursue, they're going to need some skills and that sort of stuff. Down here you have your total paces completed, your pace average, your date, and then your days absent. So this will also correlate with your actual records. A good thing to do is to fill out your actual record sheet right here and then just take from that and fill all of this in because this is the less important thing. Out of everything, this report sheet is going is the most important thing. Keeps up with your Bible memory, your physical education, which is something that, that I would also suggest you do. Being homeschooler, you can get consumed with being inside all of the time, being at the kitchen table all the time, being on the couch all the time. So physical education can be anything. You can do 30 minute recess outside just like you would do at school and it would count as physical education as long as there's some sort of exertion in there. A lot of times we like to do like Red Rover, Red Rover and if we're running and we're getting our heart rate up and stuff for a few minutes, we're, I say we're like humming that. <laughs> when they are getting their heart rate up for a few minutes, I consider that as long as it's 20 minutes longer, I consider that as a PE credit. Soccer, when you're playing sports outside soccer and it doesn't have to be within the school day. It can be later that evening while they're outside playing with their friends, somebody brings out the football and they're playing for 30, 45 minutes with the football. We school at home. That is a credit. <laughs> that is a PE credit. You can get creative like that. That's the best part of homeschooling. You can get creative with your schedule and get creative with your day. Their comprehension. How well are they comprehending? What's their average grade for their comprehension credit, their literature, their English, and their reading? Maybe you're having a lot of classical conversations. How is comprehension going in those things? That sort of thing. If you do a lot of unit studies where you do a bunch of different grades together at once for particular subjects, social studies, science, and stuff like that. Is it, if this is going over your head, just, no, it's going over mine too. My mouth is moving faster than my brain at this point. Right here is your progression towards graduation. So even as third graders this last year, my girls got one of these and it just shows you how you're progressing through and how you're on your way to graduation. They don't get credits per se right now. They'll start getting credits soon though, you know, like high school credits. And this will also be a good method to keep up with that. But for right now, it just basically says, this is how many courses we've done. This is how many courses are remaining for graduation. And it helps you keep up with all your credits and everything like that. This is another one right here. This is, an, this is a clear one, because I had an extra one. Those are your courses for credit towards graduation. And this is grade one, grade two, grade three, grade four, grade five, grade six, grade seven, grade eight. And then you get over here to your credits. So your credits toward graduation. This is the permanent record. It seems like there's a lot to it, but I promise there's not. And if you did do something like, I know I've gotten a lot of questions of people asking me what I do for homeschooling. And I try to mention it often, but I don't go over it a lot because I don't talk a lot about homeschooling on here. Homeschooling is one of those things that I just, I focus very, very hard on. I have to. I want them to have the academic support that I didn't have. I was never encouraged to do better in school um, because I was raised by people who school wasn't a thing. I mean, you know, they, back in the day, they went to the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth grade. And um, that's how life was back then. And you could do that and still have a really good job and still make money and provide for your family. Nowadays, everything relies around on your high school diploma or your equivalent, your GED. So I don't 
I don't have time to really film all that. Usually whenever we're homeschooling, I'm in the zone. Um, I have filmed some of it before, and you guys have seen kind of our schedules and routines and stuff, but whenever I film, I've got to worry about, you know, angles, behind the scenes stuff that you guys don't really think about when you're watching the video. I've got to think about angles, time stamps, things like that, and I can't do that and focus on their school. But for the questions that I do get regarding homeschooling, yes, I think it's worth it. Um, but like I said, it's not for every family. Yes, I do suggest the ace paces, but just go in knowing that they are very outdated, especially compared to some other curriculums like Abeka. Abeka is pretty much with the times, even though it is a super Christian curriculum. They're very progressive and they do a lot of things electronically and stuff. They actually even have a whole entire homeschooling program that your kid can do online with teachers. So you wouldn't even have to be the teacher in the home, which is really cool. It's kind of like the K through. 12 curriculum that some states have where you can just get online and you have a virtual teacher and stuff like that you're basically in the classroom just online so becca is very progressive when it comes to stuff like that but ace paces is one of those where it has not progressed a whole lot um colton made the joke one time and i laugh every time i think about it but he was like man this curriculum makes me want to go build an altar in the trailer park and i'm like yeah it kind of does on it <laughs> but but I do suggest it. Just make sure that you supplement in some sort of online computer typing, especially kind of thing. I don't agree a lot with... Uh, so that I don't agree with the fundamentals. I don't even know if that's that word of it. It's very respect the authority and kind of thing. And while I do think authority is to be respected, I... The, it kind of rubs me wrong some way the way that they word it in the ace paces it's like don't talk back to your to your preacher to your pastors and your teachers and while i'm not okay with talking back it's almost like a um, kids are better seen and not heard sort of thing and that's not how i raise my kids i raise my kids that if there's a problem you open your mouth about it you uh, don't let anybody run you over even if it's an adult don't let anybody intimidate you even if it's an adult because that's how you get into this fearful mindset of being a people pleaser because i had to overcome something like that where i was not supposed to say anything back i was supposed to go with the flow even if it didn't make sense to me even if i didn't agree with it even if i had questions in my mind i wasn't allowed to ask them and i don't want my kids to be raised that way they can they're allowed to question me and I know that that's not a big, you know, that's not a popular parenting method or anything like that. But my kids are allowed to question me because sometimes I'm wrong. In this house, I say I'm sorry. I apologize. Because I don't get it right all the time. And my kids appreciate the fact that I don't get it all right and I apologize. More than, more than, that was a toy. <laughs> more than they're worried about mama getting everything right all the time. They appreciate the fact that sometimes I get it wrong and I'm, the first one to apologize and be like guys i didn't address that right i'm really sorry like i could have done better or i could have said that better or we could have worked that out i don't raise my kids to just bow down to authority i do raise them to respect authority and i do raise them to respect people no matter what they respect people no matter if the people don't believe like us you respect people um, no matter if the people are different from us, you respect people. People in authority, you respect people. But, you are not to be seen and not heard. They're going to hear you before they see you. They're going to know what you stand for. My kids are so passionate in things that they stand for. They will be the first one. There was, people, there was this whole thing outside in the trailer park the other day where this new kid, he just moved here. And he was out there making fun of Jesus. And everybody else was just kind of be quiet. You know, like, don't. I, w I, was, I was very proud of this, too, because I was watching them. And I was like, mm, I wonder how my kids are going to react to this. But the other kids were like, ooh, don't make waves. You know, just, just ignore it and go with the flow and everything. And you can ignore it. And my kids were ignoring it to a point. But they're very passionate about that. So when you're up in my kid's face and you're making fun of their Savior and who they put their trust in, mine, mine this one right here behind the camera, is going to whip around and be like, nope. <laughs> I stand for what I stand for and I'm not backing down. You're not going to intimidate me into backing down. You're not going to bully me into backing down. I stand what I stand for and I don't back down. And that's what I've taught my kids to do. So even though you're supposed to respect authority, 
the way that Ace Paces kind of introduces that, it's a, you don't, you almost don't have the right to think. Um, you definitely don't have the right to question. So when we get to those points in the book, I always stop and I'm like, okay, kids, what what are we reading here? Like, let's break it down and talk about this because I know it says this, but scratch that. We're going to talk about this. For example, Joey, in the trailer part the other day when that kid was doing that and he was trying to make everybody make fun of Jesus, what did you do? Uh, okay, because, you know, it's still people's toys. So while my kids were standing up for themselves and for what they believe in, they also know that and they'll know we are Christians by our love. love. They'll know we are Christians by our love. love. So even though they are the kids that are going to stand up for what they believe in and tell you how they feel about something, you're going to know they're Christians by their love because they're not going to do it in a mean way. So you just got to, you know, be present whenever you're using any curriculum because sometimes there's a little bit of indoctrination in there and you're just like, it's a little bit too far. <laughs> some people could agree with that very much and some people have their kids um, be seen and not be heard. And I'm not here to make jabs at any parenting style. But as far as me and my house, you're going to hear my kids before you see them. <laughs> it's just how it is. So I would recommend the Ace Paces. Just, you know, be mindful when you're teaching your kids out on Hey, Billion. Well, hello. What you doing? Oh, you know. If y'all have any more questions about homeschooling, I don't care one bit to answer them. No question is a stupid question. Like I said, even if you're afraid to word it a certain way, like asking me how I homeschool while I'm uneducated or something like that, it's not going to bother me, I promise. I'll answer it with as much respect as I will any other question. You just got to ask it. I have a clear red notebook. I like having those on hand for whenever my kids are doing math problems. They don't have a calculator a lot of times because we don't do calculators a lot unless the curriculum requires it. So they do a lot of their math problems on like on paper and work it out that way. Old school. Old school. <laughs> I have one meal plan which I'm working through and then I have a second meal plan that one of you guys gave me. Actually two of you guys gave me both of these um, and I love them so much. I'm working through this one. I'm almost done with it. It's taking me forever to get through but I'm almost done with it. And then I've got this meal planner which I really love. I love both of them so much. I can't pick a favorite. I love them. And then I have my teacher binders i have this which is my weekly planner a lot of times i'll do my video editing schedule on this and then i have a tabletop one too i do my video idea scheduling on i have my wiener dog planner here and that is for everything school and everything outside of school got my homemaking binder right here and then some odds and ends little mini whiteboards for odds and ends stuff i have these unplugged plays books you can find these at ollie's and these are really awesome for kids who are on the spectrum um this one's like for preschool but what it is is it's screen free ideas for creativity it's basically just to get your kids creative mind flowing minus the screen time my kids do have a lot of screen time and their screen time is not heavily monitored so they are on their games a lot in their free time. This is really cool because this kind of takes them away from the screen, but still gets their creativity to go in and like you have indoor party games, outdoor play. Like I said, it gives you obstacle course materials, set up, uh, croquet, teaches you how to play, uh, last laugh, personalized treasure box, um, lost and found, what's cooking. There's a lot of different things in here and a lot of it does not take a lot at all, like a real scavenger. All you need is a paper, pencil, paper grocery bags, and jars with holes in the lids. Blind sketching. All you love need you. is love you. All you need is pencil, markers, crayons, newsprint or drawing paper, and a ban bandana. I thought I said banana. And a bandana. So I like getting these. They're only $2.99 at Ollie's and they're reusable because you don't write in them. So you can just flip through here and find something you think is interesting for that day and do it. Especially if you want quality time with your kids. That's a good way to go. I had these for supplementary. So if the kids need to work on something in particular, then I'll flip through here. Let's say they're having an issue. Fossils. We're going to flip here and we're going to do pages in here aside from their curriculum kind of hammered in there you know what i'm saying so i like to use this for supplementary kind of stuff and then cami loves these they're little like shape numbers colors the crayola books i also get these at ollie's 
Then here I have the Bible Made Easy. One of you guys sent this to me and I love it. You go through the entire Bible basically with this thing, but it, it brings it down to a kid's level. Kind of like a little devotional. Um, like this is the story of Ruth and it tells the story of Ruth with little pictures here and then it gets here and it says Ruth's life is an example of how we should love and it goes through the examples set in the story and then it goes over here and it talks about what is love a test of your love love is love is patient love is kind and then we have the last thing which is our basket this is our morning basket we do story of the world for for history and it's we do it as a unit so we have this little book right here and i read out of it and some of the kids have workbooks and some of them write essays depending on what grade level they're at this one is volume one ancient times and there's several different volumes of story of the world and i like them because they're very bible based and i like it a lot I always have our read aloud that we're reading for the week in our basket. I always have our devotional that we read every day in our basket. I also have little things like this if we're working on the states or if we're working on a state in particular because we like to break down the states and learn about what they're known for, what their flag looks like and stuff like that. I have a devotional that I've went through several times. I also have read-alongs here. My kids are awesome at reading, but I like to have but I like to have simple read-alouds in here just if they want to while they're waiting on me to get to them and I'm working with another kid or something, they can just pick this up, read it real quick within two minutes and they're still having their mind to work and so there's not a lull in their brain there so they don't zone out because that's what I do. If I'm, if I'm doing a lot of work and then I have to stop and wait for a minute, my brain will zone out and I'll get off that track. So keeping stuff like this around that they can read while they're waiting helps their mind to stay on track. We got stuff like Spell Across America, which helps with spelling. It's just an addition to spelling curriculum. It has like a little story here and then it has spelling words down here that you can learn. I've got my homeschooling planner, which one of you guys gave me. You made this for me. I love you, but Jesus loves you more. And I absolutely love it. Even when I get through that one, I'm keeping it forever. A lot of times I use one for Cammie and one for the other kids because their homeschool days look a lot different. And the kids each had their binder and that's their morning binder. Look, this is what we were learning about Tennessee the other day. So that's what our morning baskets look like. So while it is packed full, it's organized and ready to start the school week. I don't know which one of these I want. Don't mind my Rocky Mountain feet back there. Um, I don't know which one. These are very summery, but these are very pretty. I really like these, but I think I'm gonna do summery ones while I still have a chance, because we're in July. I mean, it's almost time for the YouTubers to get their fall decor out. Not me, but most of them. <laughs> so, uh, let's go with this one. Let's go with this one. I also have my Sally Hansen top coat here. I got my clippers and these little Altoid looking can things. Okay, I love it. It's not perfect, but I love it. That looks so summery. Okay, I love it. This one, especially, I love that flower print. Look at that, so pretty. I did not deep clean my machinery though. <laughs> I just emptied them out. I just didn't have time. That was very, being very optimistic. But at least we got it emptied out. So everything else though is done. We did that day on thing, even to the nails. <laughs> Thank y'all for hanging out with me. I hope y'all have a blessed morning, even not, whatever it is, wherever you're at. Know that I love you, but Jesus loves you more. I'll see y'all later.